This is Gabrielle Durin with your tale Slandian Gardens and Ocean Siemens news break for Tuesday, December 14, 2021. American and frontier shift in New York while China gets further away. Here's Martha Kurtick at CSA Airport. Martha? Gabrielle, the residents of Airlineville were again busy this week. It seems like they're hustling to get everything buttoned up before the quiet holiday season arrives. And by that, I mean the quiet holiday planning season. The season will be plenty busy in executing those plans, or so we hope they actually execute. The Sirium data this week showed the Eagle is remarkably active. There were many changes on multiple levels. This wasn't any kind of blunt force move. The Eagle clearly plotted well in advance. The widget was feeling a little prickly this week as he shot some daggers at friends. And let's not forget about the animal which decided once and for all to walk away from one of his biggest ideas. All this and more this week. Like sands through the hourglass, so are the skids of airlines. Air Canada gives up on China, as the world continues to reopen, China continues to lag. And now Air Canada has given up on flying from Canada to China through the end of the schedule. That's a pretty big statement right there. It will continue with four weekly flights via Seoul Incheon to Shanghai Pudong, and that's it. In other news, Vancouver to Brisbane is gone for good. Budapest and Zagreb service won't operate next summer. Alaska works on spring break. Alaska brought down March and April by a couple percent each. They're both mostly impacted by reduced frequencies in existing markets. The one winner, however, is Austin. It gets more service to Palm Springs, San Francisco, and San Jose. Partner American also boosted Austin as I'll talk about below, but remember, they aren't able to coordinate. Interestingly, Washington Dulles to Los Angeles also gets a bump up from 1 daily to 10 weekly and Payne Field gets a little more Palm Springs, Orange County, and Tucson. American sets January and February, American pulled down January and February schedules about 20%, trying to get close to reality. As part of this, there were a slew of new and cancelled routes. Here is a list of routes that American Airlines is changing. Austin, Albuquerque starts in January while Washington Dulles and Denver get extended. Dulles is now one time daily instead of two times. Boston, Grand Cayman and Raleigh-Durham won't operate next year. Charlotte, Champaign-Urbana and Toledo won't operate next year. El Paso, Ontario, and Sioux Falls won't operate in the winter. Chicago O'Hare, Charlottesville won't operate next year. Boise, Grand Cayman, Ontario, and San Jose, California won't operate in the winter. Dallas-Fort Worth, Grand Cayman and Montreal won't operate in the winter. Fort Lauderdale, Port-au-Prince won't operate in the winter. New York JFK, Liberia Costa Rica, Montreal Trudeau, San Antonio, and Toronto Pearson won't operate next year. San Jose Costa Rica won't fly next summer. Worcester will fly in the winter and there are frequency increases to Midwest business markets. New York LaGuardia, Asheville, Bangor, Boston, Charleston, South Carolina, Martha's Vineyard, Myrtle Beach, Nantucket, Orlando, Pensacola, Philadelphia, Portland, Maine, Savannah, and Traverse City won't operate next year but there are frequency increases primarily to American Airlines hubs, Philadelphia, Baltimore, Charleston, West Virginia, and Ottawa won't operate next year. And finally, Phoenix Sky Harbor, Calgary and Vancouver won't operate next year. That Boston to New York LaGuardia cancellation is most notable with flights all being operated by JetBlue going forward. Delta strikes back. It was another week of minor cuts for Delta with January and February each losing about a point and a half. But there was some growth in ULCC markets. New and increased frequency markets are as follows. From Minneapolis St. Paul, Asheville, Burlington, Jackson Hole, as a summer market, Myrtle Beach, Portland, Maine, Providence, and Savannah. For New York JFK, Sarasota. And for New York LaGuardia, Albany, Myrtle Beach, Pensacola, as a summer market, and Providence, Boston to Nassau won't operate. 
and Delta did add frequency from Detroit to Lansing, notable because United just pulled out of that market entirely. Frontier leaves Newark, as was publicly announced this week, Frontier is walking away from Newark. Service ends in February. Routes that remained until this point were Atlanta, Cancun, Dallas-Fort Worth, Miami, Montego Bay, Nassau, Orlando, San Juan, Tampa, and West Palm Beach with most ending after the holidays and only Atlanta, Cancun, Miami, and Orlando staying until the end on February 16. United cuts down on regional again, United continued with a slew of regional cuts, but this week it was just frequencies in January and February. But there was also a new regional destination buried in there. Houston to Texarkana starts in February. In other news, Amon service is now official, starting in May from Washington Dulles. There were also filings for one-off flights to CES in Las Vegas in January and a variety of college football flights. Other randomness, LL won't fly from Tel Aviv to Chicago through the winter. Finnair filed flights from DFW to Helsinki starting in February. Goal has delayed the restart of United States services to May. Porter has now gone from 78 seats back to 74 seats again in its filing. I give up. Public Charters has filed flights from Scranton to Atlantic City. Hurry up and book, because this route is clearly going to be in high demand. I'm not sure who this is operating for. Singapore must be seeing some success on Los Angeles to Tokyo Narita, so it's going from three times to four times weekly. Vietnam Airlines will fly two times weekly from San Francisco to Ho Chi Minh City starting this month. And finally, Zip Air will start flying three times weekly from Los Angeles to Tokyo Narita. That's all for this week. Stay tuned for next week's exciting episode of Skids of Airlines. From Chaseville Santa Angela International Airport, Martha Kurilik, TGES News. Very well, Martha. Because TSA still keeps the mask mandate, I hope it ends sooner or later, just like Microsoft Sam promised me. Anyways, Kentucky Governor Andy Besher says at a news conference that the death toll could exceed 100. Here's Kat Noel with a story, Kat? Gabrielle. At least 70 people are feared dead in Kentucky after tornadoes and severe weather tore through several U.S. states and caused catastrophic damage. Kentucky Governor Andy Bezier said at a news conference that the death toll could exceed 100. This has been the most devastating tornado event in our state's history. The storm hit a candle factory in Kentucky, an Amazon facility in Illinois and a nursing home in Arkansas. Mr. Bezier said about 110 people were in the Mayfield factory when the tornado hit. Kentucky State Police Trooper Sarah Burgess said search and rescue teams were going through the rubble but did not have a number for how many had died. We just can't confirm a number right now because we are still out there working, and we have so many agencies involved in helping us. She added that rescue crews were using heavy equipment to move rubble at the candle factory in western Kentucky. Coroners were called to the scene and bodies were recovered, but she did not know how many. She said it could take a day and potentially longer to remove all the rubble. President Joe Biden tweeted that he had been briefed on the situation and pledged the affected states would have what they need as the search for survivors and damage assessments continue. Kiana Parsons Perez, an employee at the factory, was trapped under five feet of debris for at least two hours until rescuers freed her. She said it was the absolutely the most terrifying event she had ever experienced. I did not think I was going to make it at all. Just before the tornado struck, the building's lights flickered. She felt a gust of wind. Her ears started popping and then, boom. Everything came down on us. Among those who helped rescue the trapped workers were inmates from the nearby Graves County Jail, she said. They could have used that moment to try to run away or anything, but they did not. They were there, helping us. Elsewhere in Graves County, the landscape was a scene of devastation with uprooted trees, downed utility poles, a store destroyed and homes severely damaged. At least one person died at an Amazon facility in Edwardsville, Illinois. Police Chief Mike Philback told reporters on Saturday morning. The roof of the building was ripped off and a wall about the length of a football field collapsed. Two people at the facility were taken to hospital in St. Louis, Mr. Philback said. It was not immediately clear whether the damage was caused by straight-line storms or a tornado, but the National Weather Service office near St. Louis reported radar-confirmed tornadoes in the Edwardsville area around the time of the collapse.
About 30 people who were in the building were taken by bus to a police station in nearby Pontoon Beach for evaluation. Early on Saturday, rescue crews were still sorting through the rubble. Mr. Philback said the process could take several more hours. Cranes and diggers were brought in to help move debris. The safety and well-being of our employees and partners is our top priority right now, Amazon spokesperson Richard Roca said in a written statement. We're assessing the situation and will share additional information when it's available. Workers at a National Weather Service office had to take shelter as a tornado passed near their office in Weldon Spring, Missouri, about 30 miles west of St. Louis. One person died and two others were injured in building collapses near the towns of Defiance and Numela, both a few miles from the weather office. A tornado struck the Monet Manor nursing home in Arkansas on Friday night, killing one person and trapping 20 people inside as the building collapsed, Craighead County Judge Marvin Day told the Associated Press. Five people suffered serious injuries, and a few others had minor ones, he said. Three storm-related deaths were confirmed in Tennessee, said Dean Flanner, spokesman for the Tennessee Emergency Management Agency. Two occurred in Lake County, and the third was in Obion County, both in the northwestern corner of the state. The storm swept through Bowling Green, Kentucky, near the Tennessee border, tearing off roofs and flinging debris into roads. The GM Corvette assembly plant and the nearby Corvette Museum sustained light damage. A truck was overturned and pushed against a building across the street. Western Kentucky University's president, Timothy C. Caboni, said on Twitter that one of its students who lived off campus was killed. Reporting live from the state of Kentucky, Kat Knoll, TGES News. Thanks Kat. Very horrible, but we'll donate some money to rebuild everything that was destroyed by those twisters. In other words, authorities say at least 60 killed, dozens injured in the northern city of Cap Haitian, but death toll may rise. In Cap Haitian, here's Layla Tupper with a story. Gabrielle, at least 60 people have been killed and dozens more injured after a truck carrying fuel exploded in the northern Haitian city of Cap Haitian, a local official said, as authorities are calling for additional supplies and staff to help treat the victims. The explosion occurred just after midnight on Tuesday in Haiti's second largest city, on the country's northern coast, where survivors rushed outside and yelled as they observed how the fire consumed part of their neighborhood. Hours later, a local hospital was overwhelmed with injured people as it pleaded for basic supplies and more medical staff. We have now counted 60 deaths, said Deputy Mayor Patrick Harmonor, adding that authorities were still searching for victims amid the charred debris. According to Armanor, it appeared the truck driver lost control as it swerved to avoid a motorcycle taxi and the tanker flipped over. He said fuel spilled onto the road and pedestrians rushed to collect it. It was after midnight and I heard a loud noise so I asked one of my boys to go and look. He told me a gasoline truck exploded. Right away, I left with my family, and I headed the other way to the bridge. Three days of national mourning will be decreed throughout the territory in memory of the victims of this tragedy that has devastated the entire Haitian nation. From Cap Haitian, I am Layla Tupper, TGES News. Thank you, Lila. And that's it for the night. We'll produce three news stories to share with the entire Tales Lundian Gardens and Ocean Siemens community. This is Gabrielle During from Tales Lundian Gardens and Ocean Siemens News, signing off. <laughs> Remember to follow your dreams in the wake of Derek Hipster's disappearance.